You may already know about Odin attributes such as required or validate input that can help prevent errors as you build your project. But what if you wanted or needed more specific validation of your project? Maybe checking to make sure every nav mesh agent is on a nav mesh. Well, that's where custom validators come in. There are four types of validators that can be extended and customized for use with the Odin validator. Scene, value, root object, and attribute validators. Additionally, the iSelf validator interface can be implemented for extra ease of use. Each of these has a unique role and place in the project. In this video, we'll be looking to create a root object validator that checks if a nav mesh agent is on a nav mesh. If not, we'll get a message letting us know about the potential issue. Root object validators, as the name suggests, only validate root objects and not references to the object, whereas a value validator will validate references as well. There are some similarities and differences between the two types of validators, and we'll have a future video that looks specifically at the value validator and some of its unique properties. In our example case, Unity is drawing the inspector for the nav mesh agent and not own inspector. So the validation message will not show up in the inspector, just the widget and the validator window. To create a new validator of any type, simply right click in your Unity project folders and select Odin validator, then create validator. And finally, the type of the validator you want to create. When the pop-up window opens, choose the save location in the project along with the name of the validator. In our case, we'll call ours nav mesh agent validator. If the naming of the validator is the name of an existing class followed by validator, Odin will do its best to parse the name and use the correct types in the validator class. If the types don't exist or can't be found by Odin, you may need to make some manual adjustments. When registering the validator or rule, the type needs to match the class name and the base class's generic argument needs to be the type that is being validated. For this video, we are validating the nav mesh agent component. Now, as a side note, there is an option to create a rule in addition to creating a validator. We'll address the differences between rules and validators in a future video, but essentially rules are serialized, can be configured in the validator window, and can be toggled on and off. Whereas validators cannot be toggled on and off or configured in the validator window. Also, it's worth noting that validators work out of the box with Odin Inspector and do not require the Odin validator add-on, whereas rules do. You can of course create a validator from scratch, but using the context menu like we did adds in the needed namespaces, inherits from the correct class, and registers the validator or rule. If you decide that your validator should be a rule or vice versa, it's just a matter of changing how it's registered, which is done above the class definition. We use register validator for validators and register validation rule for rules. For a basic validator, all the magic happens in the overridden validate function. In our case, we'll be making use of the function navmesh.sampleposition. And to do so, we'll need a position to test and a max distance around that point to search. So we'll create two new variables. The first is a vector three, and we'll call it position. To get a value for this, we'll need a reference to the object being validated, which in this case is the navmesh agent. To get a reference to this object, we can use this.object. And from there, we can get access to the transform and thus the position of the object. Next, to get a reasonable search distance, we can use the radius of the nav mesh agent. So our second variable is a float called max distance. Our value will come from this.object.radius. Finally, we need to sample the position and see if it's on a nav mesh. We'll do this by wrapping the nav mesh sample position function in an if statement. If the sample position is not on a nav mesh, point within the radius is also not on nav mesh, then we want to display a warning. This is done simply by calling result.addWarning and providing an appropriate warning as a string. If you prefer, an error can also be displayed by replacing addWarning with addError. And that's it. If we let the code compile and return to our project, we can see new warnings displayed, which we can quickly fix. Whether you are part of a large team or a solo developer, validators are a great way to make sure that objects and components are set up correctly, potentially saving huge amounts of time in the development of your project. So I hope that was interesting and better yet useful for you and your project. Until next time, happy game designing.